Hey guys, it's Mike here. Uh, today we're going to talk about again Elastic Beanstalk. This is the second part, uh, second video for this uh, topic. In the first video, I uh, showed you how to uh, do blue green deployment and how to deploy your Spring Boot application to Elastic Beanstalk. And uh, if you haven't watched that, you can uh, find it down below and uh, there's a link and you can, you can go and watch it. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, actually how to share secrets like database URL, you know, some parameters for your application in your Elastic Beanstalk and how to uh, get them configured and get your application basically use those uh, during the runtime. So as you know, in Spring Boot, you can actually uh, use profiles, right? And basically you can have a profile called uh, dev uh, and test and you can have another one called production, right? Uh, prod. So when you're when you're running your application, if you basically your active profile is development, it's going to basically use a bunch of parameters to, for example, connect to test database. You know, uh, uh, use some dummy data in order to test application. But uh, when you do the final deployment, your active, of course, uh, profile it's going to be your production environment. And uh, of course, when you deploy the program, uh, Spring Boot automatically it's going to inject and use all the environment variables that. Uh, basically configured for your production environment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, set this up. And without further ado, let's get started. So what I'm trying to do here, actually, I'm trying to pass some variables from my proper application properties file uh, and inject them basically to some private variables. And I have a simple controller, uh, which is which maps uh, slash properties you know, and basically returns the, the, the string, which is a concatenation of these two variables. So one of them is called uh, spring uh, data source URL, and the other one is uh, DB username. All right, so what I can do, I have two uh, ways of basically tackling this problem. One way will be uh, creating different uh, profiles, like application profiles for uh, test environment, for uh, dev environment, and for production environment, and basically, all I need to do in my application properties is just activate the profile that I want to, you know, work with. If I'm deploying to production, I can just uh, change the profile to production. But um, that's an easy way. Uh, it's a very, you know, standard, common way of uh, injecting, you know, the profile to the application. But in this case, uh, I want to show you a different approach, which is which one of them in application properties, as you can see, I have a variable uh, spring data source URL of uh, which maps to a, a database. Basically, this is just a test URL. And I have another one called a DB username and it's empty. There's nothing in it because what I want to do, I want to basically provide this DB username uh, in my elastic beanstalk environment. This application is ready for deployment now. But uh, if you recall, uh, in the first video, basically we tested the application on default port, which was 8080, and we opened up a port in our security settings and security groups, which allows uh, traffic 8080. But in this one, actually, I'm gonna uh, add something uh, called server port, uh, which I'm gonna actually map it to port 5000, because by default, Elastic Beanstalk, uh, you know, it's gonna look for port, uh, port 5000 for Spring Boot application. Uh, so basically, we can access this application without uh, specifying the port 8080. So again, uh, Spring Boot application runs on 8080, but Beanstalk maps it to uh, 5000. So if I inject the 5000 as a property, basically the application will run on that port so uh, I can just access the website directly. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create uh, another package. Awesome. So we got the file um, and now we're ready to go back to our uh, EBS environment and basically start building the application. So here's a test application that I'm building and I'm going to upload my code and tell Beanstalk to use this uh, version and I'm going to hit upload. All right, uh, application now it's available. We're going to configure a few things. As you remember, uh, we have to set up two things here. Uh, one of them is security, which is basically your key. And one of them is your network, which you have to uh, basically select your public subnet. So the application will be able to basically serve traffic. So one extra piece that we have to hear, uh, configure here is our software section. I'm going to click on software section and scroll down. As you can see, there are some environment properties now down here. 
Uh, and if you recall from our application, I basically, uh, if I run this application locally, let's actually do that. Let's run this application locally and uh, see what we get here. All right, it's running on four 5,000. If you remember all right so if you look uh, I actually pulled uh, the variable name my database name and in concatenation in the stream I've concatenated the DB username but nothing is showing up here as you can see and the reason for that is basically because the variable is there but it's empty because I, I want to inject that variable uh, through elastic beanstalk to my application and have the application pick it up from here so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually go and select the same name. I'm going to say DB username. I'm going to say test user or uh, test DB user. So I inject that I told application uh, that this variable is available in my Beanstalk environment. This will be basically injected as an environment variable. So for security reason, I'm just going to pause here to select my key and select my network and then hit the create application. All right, guys, I'm ready to create uh, the application. I'm going to click on it. It's going to take probably a minute uh, to uh, Beanstalk to get this configured. So our application will be available. And remember, one more time, uh, we are running our application on for, uh, port 5000. All right, the application is ready now. Uh, if I go ahead and click on the link, as you can see, the application is running on uh, port 5000 by default, which Beanstalk is looking for that port. And I don't need to specify 8080 port here. So I just go ahead and uh, basically access the mapping uh, that I had in the application, properties. And if I hit OK, and as you can see right now, I am reading the database URL from the application from the application uh, spring data source URL uh, application.properties file. But I am picking the DB username from the Elastic Beanstalk environment uh, variables, environment properties. This value is being picked up uh, basically from my Elastic Beanstalk environment. So uh, this is very straightforward. Even when you uh, s uh, swap environment, so uh, when you clone the environment, basically it's going to inherit all those uh, variables. And uh, if you want to specify the variable around during the runtime, you can definitely do it by injecting it to an Elastic Beanstalk environment. Otherwise, you can just uh, simply provide them in your uh, different, basically, pro profiles. Like you can have application dash dev dash application dash uh, you know test application that um, uh, product production and then uh, basically just activate the profile that you want to deploy to your environment. All right, guys. Uh, in this video, we learned how to configure uh, you know parameters for your application and uh, basically uh, integrate it with Elastic Beanstalk. So your Elastic, we saw how Spring Boot application uh, picks up all the values from. Uh, from your you know, Elastic Beanstalk environment variables and injects them to software. So I hope you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Leave any comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Any questions and thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.